Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to my session on observability best practices. My name is Evelyn Schelkens. I'm a solutions architect at Elastic. And before joining Elastic, I was a DevOps consultant where I learned some uh, best practices uh, that I now use with Elastic. Uh, and I'm excited to share these with you today. So before we get started, I'd like to like um, talk a little bit about monitoring versus observability. I see these terms being used interchangeably, but actually they both mean different things. So monitoring is what will show you what actually doesn't work. Um, it's more visible, it's your dashboards, it's your alerting, while observability shows you uh, the whole uh, environment, uh, all the data uh, to make it easier to, um, to find the root cause if something goes wrong. So that's why it's very important to not only do monitoring and check for known unknowns, but also uh, do observability. So you see also what you don't see uh, and actually uh, find an issue uh, more quickly. So dashboards are great, right? It's really cool to have a dashboard in your office, like looking at all the different graphs, but you can't look at the dashboard all day. You need to be alerted when something happens. And that's one of the first best practices. So use alerts and take action when something happens. So in Elastic, uh, you can use a lot of out of the box alerts or also create your own ones. And by doing this, you will be notified when something is yeah, not working. And then you can take the appropriate action. Then we have machine learning. So it's very important to leverage machine learning because you don't want to create static rules, static thresholds all the time because it can change. Uh, with anomaly detection, uh, the machine learning will actually learn when, like what is normal for your data and when something yeah, is out of the ordinary, it will trigger uh, an alert and you can take a look uh, at what happens. So we do this for metrics, for example, latency, when suddenly there's more latency than before. But we also do this for logs. So if a certain log always comes in, uh, but suddenly stops coming in, you will get alerted. But also the other way around, if a certain error log never happens and it suddenly happens, yeah, then you also want to know. So machine learning is a great way to not have static rules, uh, which may generate a little bit too much of false positives and alert fatigue is a real thing. So that's why it's important to leverage machine learning. And it's also important to use connectors. So connectors can, um, you can connect, for example, to Slack or Microsoft Teams or any other tool you're already using. And by doing that, you already integrate with the processes you already have. Um, so it's easier to take action. It fits in the process and systems of your company. The second best practice is storing all the data in one single place. So you have all the context you need when something happens. To do this, you can leverage distributed tra tracing, which you can do using the Elastic APM agent or open telemetry agents. We, both, we support both protocols uh, natively. By having this distributed tracing, you can see which applications or which services are having issues and find a team that are, is responsible for, for them. Next is, we also have traces, we have logs, we have metrics, but also security data. So it's super powerful to have all your different data in one single system, so you can correlate between this data. You can look at a log, for example, a certain error log, and jump to the metrics of that for example, JVM server. So it's really powerful to have all your data in one single place. But of course, you cannot keep all your data forever and also not all in hot tier. And that's why it's important to leverage data tiering. So we have a hot uh, tier, but we also have a warm, cold and frozen tier. So it makes sense for data that, for example, you make a quarterly report um, to store that data in a cold tier, which is more cost efficient. Also, for example, regarding security data or audit logs, those you may keep for like years, uh, and then we suggest to 
store this in frozen tier and to be able to have like a cost effective way to store data for a long time. And you can still search across all these tiers. The last best practice is let the pieces fit together. So it's very important um, to, so when you know something happens and you have all the context, then you need to find out what exactly happened. And that you can do with, for example, annotations. So you can use annotations in your CI-CD pipeline, for example, when you deploy a new uh, application. You can set an annotation and then it will show up in, for example, a latency uh, graph where you can see when a certain rollout was uh, done. So in this example, we see that there was a new version deployed and then right after we see these spikes in latency uh, and then we decided to roll back again. Uh, and it's, it's a simple thing to add an annotation, but it gives a lot of context for the operations team or for developers that are actually looking uh, in the UI. Next, and also a little bit um, related to this, is adding metadata to your APM data. So by using, uh, adding more uh, information to your APM, application performance monitoring data, you can make it easier to find the root cause. So what Elastic can do is something called uh, latency correlation, and it will check what all the slow traces have in common. So it will look at all the fields and find out which fields are similar or have the same value and let it uh, let you know. So in this case, we see there was a cache miss. We can see the cache was enabled and also the new version was used. So this is super powerful if you want to be able to quickly find uh, the right uh, cause of an issue. And then we have something called Elastic Common Schema. This is um, our like naming convention to make sure all the fields of the data you are storing are uh, in the same format, like the same field names. For example, in this case, uh, the container ID. If your data has the same field names across all the different sources, you are able to query all of them. You can jump between different data sources and it makes life just easier. If you use our out-of-the-box integrations, they already use Elastic Common Schema, but if you have custom log sources, you need to map them uh, to the Elastic Common Schema to fully leverage the power of Elastic. So, to summarize, first we talked about getting alerted and taking action. So, configure alerts, but also use machine learning to have smart alerts and only alert you when something is actually not as it, sh it should be. For example, sometimes weekends are slower and you don't want to get notified. Um, so this is very, very powerful. And also, um, after you have the alert, store all the data. Sorry, <laughs> not that. Um, when you have uh, the alert, you can go to Elastic, have all the data in one place where you can take a look at um, yeah, what exactly happened. Um, so there you could you see different data tiers um, to, to query through your data and also um, find with the distributed tracing the specific service that got like an error, for example. And then lastly, we have a lot of pieces to fit together. So remember, we talked about adding annotations, adding metadata, extra context, so it's easier to find um, yeah, the root cause of your issues and um, have more context for people that might not work with the same services as you do. And then, of course, the Elastic Common Schema that helps bring all this data uh, together. So if you would like to get started with Elastic um, today, you can use our Elastic Cloud. We have a 14-day free trial so without credit card. Um, and then you can just spin up a cluster in like five minutes uh, and get started with it. We also have some free training. Those cover quick starts, how-tos and fundamentals. And we also have some events and workshops coming up. So check them out.
if you like what you see, you can also go to the QR code where we did a whole webinar about this and also had some demo um, pieces uh, throughout it. And we, if you have more questions, you can come ask them at the booth uh, in the back. So thank you.